Hello and welcome to another bot bash in Dawn of War Soulstorm. Uh, in case you're not familiar with the bot bash is, we take as many AI as we can, cram them in the smallest space as possible, and let them go to town on each other. I'm your host on Normalism, and the first thing we have to do is end the Ultramarines. I'm very sorry to any fans of the Ultramarines. It's kind of an old joke now, killing them off, being mean to them. But the Ultramarines are not gone in spirit, as you'll see. We have here the Plain Marines representing the Imperial Guard, the Ultra Obscene representing the Dark Eldar, the Ultramarines, that's close enough to the town naming convention, for the Tau, the uh, Ultramarines for the Necrons, I couldn't come up with a good name for them, uh, so if you've got a better name, please do tell, uh, the Ultra Boys for the Orc, the Ultra Femmarines for the Sisters of Battle. That name is terrible, but it's uh, the best I could come up with. And lastly, the Ultra Marines. Uh, sort of a nod to Ulthuan. It was meant to sound like that. Oh, it might have been Ultra Marines. I can't remember. But you get the idea. And so that will be our competitors today. The uh, Ultra Marines living on in spirit through these other factions. Uh... I wanted to say a quick thank you to Mixter for commenting about the better camera mod that allows me to zoom in and out like that, so I'll be able to get a lot more of the action in, and also suggesting a better AI mod. I looked one up, looks like the most popular one, we'll see what it does, hopefully it, it makes the AI play a bit more sensibly so they don't get locked in their tech, and will it remains to be seen, but I'm pretty hopeful at this point. Um, we see three holes of blood coming out of the uh, Dark Elder. I'm a little bit confused by that. They haven't built any gas, which is usually a, a strong indicator of how they're going to do it, is if they build gas. But it should be a nice violent map. There's lots of very small avenues to come through where teams will just run into each other straight away and take each other's bases. Unfortunately, all the maps in Dawn of War are actually quite large um, when you get to eight players. So not a lot of room for goofy, small fights, but, you know... We, we cram as much as we can in and hope it just makes for a spectacle. And right now we've got the Imperial Guard moving out on two fronts. The Eldar moving out towards the middle, ignoring their Orc foes. No, oh, sorry, Sisters of Battle they're facing off. Sisters of Battle being driven back, but they've got quite a few squads already. This will be uh, quite easy to even out. How are they doing back at home? No gas here either. The Orcs have at least one generator, so it looks like they'll be able to get something done. So not represented today are the Space Marines or the Chaos Space Marines, sadly. Uh, didn't have a good name for the Chaos Space Marines either. I might have just, you know, maybe I'll make them a team that's something like uh, Totally Ultramarines or something like that. Some joke, you know. So far, Tau's getting set up. One gas there. You don't need too much gas early on. It's mostly about what squads you field. But it does help to have a few units going. Uh, these fire warriors should get picked off pretty easy. Oh no, that's some crutes in there. The crutes do look a lot like the mandrakes when they're coloured like that. <laughs> it's a little bit bad. Only from a distance. Up close it's a bit more clear. I'm surprised they're not just full on engaging the tower. They could probably handle that, especially if that listening post gets upgraded. Got some fights going on over here. Nope, that's just the Imperial Guard shooting an Earthcast Builder. Nothing really going on in the centre, that's a surprise. Commissar being chased away by Guardians. That's, uh, the Eldar are really pushing out there. The Imperial Guard actually have a very strong game today if they can take where my former base would have been and really claim that whole zone for themselves. They could launch themselves ahead of every other player. But that remains to be seen. We'll see what they get up to. This Builder Tech Priest Engineer is going to go down. Uh, that Tech Priest Engineer will fortunately make it through to build that. Got some Guardsmen coming home to defend. The Imperial Guard are pushing way out to get that relic when there's one right at home. A little bit weird. Not much you can do about it. Got a plasma generator coming up for the Dark Elder. Good, good. The Necrons, like always, are going to go absolutely nuts until they're stopped because they always build plasma generators. It's basically one of their core structures. Whereas other teams can go without for a long time, the Necron usually need to get it pretty quick if they want to maintain sort of growth. But they also want to get a lot of uh, the obelisks so they can get that faster build rate for their units. It'll be interesting putting them near the orcs who are a very strong faction early on for numbers. I don't know how the orcs fare later on in the game, 
but I know especially early on just their sheer uh, brute force can be overwhelming for a lot of teams and here we've got the Tau taking a relic far from home I think I'm pretty sure that... oh, we've got a fight going on the uh, Eldar are picking off this listening squad and it sounds like there's more fighting over here oh yep another guardian squad taken down by those sisters of battle torn to pieces that was pretty easy even got to see a cool melee execute What's coming down this way? Got some more Guardians and a Warlock. Are they going to take this Relic or are they going to take a Relic across the map? See each team sort of trying to maneuver into our, taking their corner. Except for this. This is a little bit weird. The Eldar... Are, if the Eldar... Whoever gets this corner will, will definitely be in a lead. And I, I, it's assumed that the Imperial Guard would. But um, so far that's <laughs> not the case. They haven't actually claimed that corner. At least they're getting plenty of power this time. Their pop's full right now but... The Imperial Guard tend to die pretty quick. They're pretty squishy. This is very aggressive to be pushing up that deep. Got some uh, stealth suits driving them away. Won't achieve much there. We've got uh, the Tau Commander laying into this. I love the Tau Commander. Easily my favorite unit in the game. Maybe? Favorite commander at the very least. Favorite hero unit. I just love the rockets, the flamethrower, all that you can get. Especially upgrading the gun. In the campaign, they are just so awesome. I suppose that's a little bit biased though, saying in the campaign they're so awesome. It's the campaign, they're not, <laughs> you know, all the commanders get pretty ridiculous. You know, I would like to see a campaign where the Big Mac was the leader instead of the war boss. I think it would be interesting to have a, a Big Mac actually be the command unit and then the war boss is just sort of like his patsy. Like a, a, a fall guy, so to speak. A big mech being a bit more cunning than uh, brutal for once. This is quite an ugly fight. We've got these flayed ones. They're actually very dangerous to the orcs. Their lack of morale means that they'll just slowly whittle down these orcs, tear apart their morale. Um, it's, they can be pretty tough at this point in the game to kill. You really need to focus them down with some good ranged units. And unfortunately it looks like the orcs are struggling with these tower warriors. Uh, Necron warriors. Not a huge surprise. Again, it... As if, if, even if I say the Orcs are very strong early on, the only team I can think that are stronger is the Necron. Um, you kind of have to whittle them down a bit with superior firepower before you can catch up to them, so to speak. Just because their their Necron warriors are absolutely cheap. Well, not free, but they're cheap. They're, they're free at your command center, at your HQ, your monolith. So, unless you're whittling down their numbers very quickly... Um, they can just produce an army, throw it at you, produce another army, throw it at you. Oh, this is a very favorable position for the Orcs, because we've got these two listening posts um, constantly shooting. So, hopefully they won't lose too much, and they've got some shooters and some knobs. Those knobs should be able to, yeah, it looks like they picked off all those Necrons. So, between the nod, knobs and the shooter boys, they should be able to drive this back. They just need to not let this listening post go down for nothing. Over here, we've got the Imperial Guard still pushing in on the Tau, pointlessly. Um, the Tau don't really... They're not your enemy yet, Imperial Guard, but I guess this is where you've made your stand. Imperial Guard is moving into this small corner. They're actually claiming that to give themselves a strong lead, but they do have the Eldar aggressively in their base. Got some Banshees, Guardian Squads, Reapers. Uh, I think, if anything, the Eldar knows what's going on here, and they're trying to keep the Imperial Guard in line from going too crazy. What's this doing on down here? Oh, yep, yeah, they're coming in through the back to maybe take that strategic post or reinforce. I like these little back paths, they're a neat little sneak place you can go for the different teams to uh, engage your enemies on different angles. It's why I chose this map actually, it's got those little fun nooks and crannies and you know there are the strategic points at either end of them to encourage going along there and fighting. Too many maps you'll see that the, the map, like the base has one exit and there's no way really in other than that exit but in this map there's actually a couple for each team. When there's only one exit, you can just put a bunch of turrets there and, and it makes for a, a boring fight just trying to slog through that. Whereas if it's got lots of holes in it, you can get ambushed from all sides and it, it can make a really interesting spectacle. And I do think these AI are actually doing a lot better than they did without the mod. Um, it seems like they are all producing it in a normal way. They're all upgrading, they're all building gas, they're all getting units and tech as you would expect. So it's going to be a lot more of an even fight um, across the board. It might even go for a lot longer. We'll have to see. And if it does, well, that's that. I'm here for the long haul, and I hope you guys are too. 
Speaking of, I wanted to give out another small shout out to Single Orb. Uh, Single Orb commented first on one of my videos, and that caught me off guard because I didn't know people still did that, <laughs> and they did it again. Um, <laughs> so you get a shout out for that. Good on you. I encourage that kind of behavior. <laughs> if only out of nostalgia. We're not in the day and age where comments are sorted by date or whatever now, so, you know, first isn't really that offensive. It's it's just kind of novel to me. I appreciate it. Seeing these Necron and Orc fight, it's going poorly for the Orcs still, I think, even though these are Necron Warriors. Actually, that more, uh, war track with its mortar, it does have the Bomb Chucker upgrade. It is doing devastating damage because the Necron can't rally to beat on a single unit. It's allowing them just to get shot. That Wraith chasing down some Gretchens is one of the most Warhammer things I've seen. Just a bunch of cowardly Gretchens running and screaming while chased by a mechanical monstrosity like that. Necron really do strike a good balance between, you know, what they were going for, I think. The whole no robots, but still sort of a, an unstoppable robot army. It gave them a really interesting flavor. And it was a cool way that they kind of combined like a fantasy equivalent of of, uh, of the Tomb Kings. It was just a really unique thought process. And you'll find that most of these teams do derive themselves from um, fantasy battles. And that's not a, a negative, that's actually quite a positive. They've got some really interesting cultures. And just seeing how they adapt those cultures into the game are very unique. Like I always saw the Space Marines sort of as Bretonians because they hold this, you know, I know it's, it's the Empire, but they, they seem very knightly. And they hold these knightly sort of ideals and, and different um, orders, so to speak. I assume, I, I don't know if everyone else thinks that's the same. Maybe I'm crazy thinking that that's not obvious. <laughs> and obviously the Imperium of Man is the, uh, is well, the Imperium of Man, the, <laughs> the Empire. Um, and so on. You've got all those, those different combinations. And then the Tomb Kings are the Necrons. But the interesting one to me is the Tyranid are actually basically the, the lizard men. if you look at them from a, a distance through a certain scope. You've got the, uh, they both come from spawning pools. Um, you've got like the, the weak little skinks versus the weak, weak little, um, you know, the lesser hormigons and tormagons. I can't remember the name, sorry, of the different units for the neck, uh, Tyranid. Wow, I forgot their name for a minute there. And then you've got the next cased up is the warrior cased. And then you've got like your, your weak, vulnerable spellcasters between the zoanthropes and the, the slan. And then at the big unit scale, you've got like dinosaurs versus, you know, your carnifaxes, that kind of thing. So it, it's got that cool parallel that that's basically makes logical sense. And it it's interesting to look at it through that angle. You sort of get a bit of an eye opener to where maybe they came from and, and what their design was and and just the differences it makes taking something from fantasy to sci-fi and how versatile the laws are these ideas are that you can find equivalence between the two i do i am a little bit sad that there's not a uh, rts version of of this style for fantasy battles fantasy battles is definitely my greater love of the two warhammer 40k is still brilliant it's got a lot of merits to it, but Fantasy's definitely the greater appeal, and Total War Warhammer was a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, it's it's really missing a base building sort of strategy game. They seem to lend themselves more to following the style of the tabletop, which I don't begrudge, but I, I love this this game. Obviously, I love Dawn of War, and I'd love to see a fantasy Warhammer Fantasy Battle equivalent, equivalent of that. So let's see who eventually won this corner. It looks like the Imperial Guards have claimed it. They're going up to a mechanized command. That is held by Team 3. Is that... No, that... Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this is... Computer 3 does not hold that. I Actually, I can just look at the banner. Yeah, that's Imperial Guard. Imperial Guard hold that structure. They're driving out the Eldar. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. They've all got the <laughs> Ultramarine banner. So it doesn't matter who... You... Oh, dear. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I did this. This was my doing. I'm sorry. I gave everyone the ultramarine symbols. I think if I go and look, I might even be able to find the ultramarine symbol, the curved crest. I'm not sure what that's called on the uh, shoulder pads of the ultramarines. Uh, I might be able to find that on other units. 
Imperial Guard have taken a very strong base. They've claimed basically this entire central section, as well as their their own quarter of the map. Um, just sheer force of numbers, it seems. Uh, over here, we can see now that the Orcs have gotten to vehicle tech. They are faring way better against the Necron, who, you know, once they have that initial strong start, their units do kind of come become valuable. Um, and losing that many in a fight, you know, it's really set them back. Now they're like swarming with wraiths in an attempt to sort of make some headway, but wraiths, while cheap, are not effective units because they're individual. All you can really do is, yeah, put on that ability that makes them ethereal so that they can't get hit, and that'll stall for you, but only really against AI. Whereas what they really want to be getting is, is probably some immortals to gun down these war tracks, uh, get some warriors backing it up to get in the way, pariahs, flayed ones. Store a flayed one in your structure, build an immortal into um, two warriors, drop the flayed one into the middle of this pack, have the warriors just shooting whatever, and the immortals pick off each vehicle. That'd be how you drive this attack back, but right now it seems like the only thing that's going to stop the orcs is this eventual gauze turret wall that the Necron likes to build, defending their base. Over here we have a whole bunch of guardsmen. I would not be surprised if they go in for the kill on the Dark Eldar with this, this sheer number. But that's six squads? Five or six squads? It might be five squads in the command squad, which is a lot of troops. It doesn't matter if you've got turrets. In fact, the Dark Eldar have kind of been... It looks like they've been squashed in. I think building three halls of blood was uh, not intent. Who just lost? Oh my god, the Sisters of Battle. I was not paying nearly enough attention talking about my own things. Rest in peace, Ultra, <laughs> ultra Fem Marines. You were... Well, I guess you didn't put up much of a fight. The Eldar kind of steamrolled there. Um, a little bit strange. You can see the... I think the Eldar have stopped all their stuff. Or they got attacked by someone and destroyed a whole bunch. But I'm, I'm pretty sure they've just stealthed a bunch of things. We'll have a look through soon. Oh, I love the Sentinel being out. The Tau might actually be saving... Nope, that's the Tau fighting the Dark Eldar. Okay. The Dark Eldar look like they're about to get absolutely smashed if this army comes in here, but they've been drawn away to join the fight over the side where these Mandrakes are... The Dark Eldar are picking a fight on two fronts. This is going to get them killed. They cannot face the Tau and the Imperial Guard at the same time. But now they're retreating, maybe there's a chance that the Imperial Guard will get lured into a fight with the Tau, which could be devastating for the Tau and give the Dark Eldar a chance to recoup and recover. What these other factions need to stay in the game to keep up is to be getting some vehicles and, and not just small vehicles really good ones especially long range high damage ones you, you know i'm not really i guess raiders for the uh dark elder the something that just does a lot of damage to infantry um tau can do it basically with fire warriors they don't even need anything fancy but uh yeah see a sky ray uh what is it sky ray missile gunship that's not gonna help what you need is anti-infantry right now, and that's just fire warriors. That's that's core troops of the Tau, not some pathfinders. You want anti-infantry, because that is what the Guardsman's strength is. The Guardsman himself is the backbone of the Imperial Guard. Well, fortunately, it seems like the Guardsman will have a real opposition in this Eldar, who is also fielding so much infantry. But the Eldar infantry is a lot better than the Guardsman, especially when you send... A bunch of howling banshees and they will tear apart the imperial guard drag them into melee and, and really gun them down and it looks like the orcs are now working their way to eliminating the necron so it seems like we will have a three-way fight between the imperial guard the orc and the elder now i've called before a defeated faction you know not coming back and then they go on to win but in this case it, it doesn't seem very likely maybe the tau will be able to hold on against the Imperial Guard might, but uh, it looks unlikely. And there goes the Dark Eldar and the Necron will be... No? Not soon to join him? The Orc just wanted the listening post. We've got some Tau over here getting in the way. Oh, okay, so there is actually a bit of a fight going on here. Now, that is really not the place you want that building, unless it gets the research finished, which it looks like it will. So it's not a total waste. And we see that the Tau are going for... Uh, Montcar, which I believe is unit upgrades. Yeah, that's got to be the unit upgrades. I much prefer that one. Um, I love getting... I, I am more about the Tau 
core forces than getting the, uh... Wait, I'm confused. I forget which is... Yeah, the tower core forces than getting their upgraded vehicle. I, um, you'll see that with most armies that I play. I believe a good mix of infantry and vehicles is, is how every team fares best, and the Tau focusing on those super vehicles, I'm not a fan of it. I, I definitely prefer them utilizing strong infantry um, and, and backing that up. Kuyon versus Montcar. I can't remember which is which, so maybe I got it wrong. We'll, we'll see if they break out those really big gunships with the, the multiple guns. Uh, I've never had much success with them personally. They don't feel as awesome and powerful. This is actually very good for everyone in general. There are a lot of Imperial Guard dying right now. It's not good for the Tau because they're suffering pretty bad, but the Tau are killing a lot of Imperial Guard. Let's get a storm. There seems like a lot of units out there. Oh, that is six Sentinels. A giant army of Imperial Guard. That is terrifying. What have they got back here? Pretty standard fare right now. There's that little crest I was talking about. Two mechanized command, totally approve. Just the one infantry command. Is that two infantry commands? Two infantry commands, and you get your tactical control. Good, good. The Eldar have secured their base. I really thought the Necrons. Oh, here we go. This might be the killing blow for the Necrons. There are three Gauze Taurus over there, though. So, unless this uh, monolith fares well, that Necron Lord could stall long enough that. Um, they get some work done, but they've lost too much ground at this point. It's unlikely they'll be able to come back. We'll go through the teams real quick just to see how everyone's doing. As you can see, the Imperial Guard are going crazy. But you know what? Sending in vehicles against the tower right now, that's a big mistake. And there you go. There's that Hammerhead gunship. So they did go for the vehicles rather than the infantry. Definitely prefer the infantry to that, but I won't begrudge someone for picking the Hammerhead gunship. Uh, just look how quick it's going down though. I know it's against good anti-vehicle units, but it doesn't have the range of the Skyray gunship to really, you know, make it last. So this is good for everyone else but the Tau. They're, they're going to get creamed. Look at all these Imperial Gods. It's a good chokehold, but these uh, Sentinels are doing so much work. Just everything is doing so much effective work right now. It's hard to say that the... Uh, tower making much headway maybe that was a good missile strike from the sky ray it might have been oh great analog on the field okay we'll come back to that fight in just a sec just wanted to see how everyone else is doing that's the tower they're currently capped got the necron yeah 30 percent build time bonus that's what i wanted to see and it looks like they'll get eliminated the orcs are getting creamed by the eldar right now i missed this too wow and that appears to be the sisters of battle the eldar and me well, it looks like right now we have the Eldar are shredding these orcs, tearing them to pieces, really just gutting through this base. I kind of would have expected these warg banners to be defending them better. Why is... It looks like the orcs are going to be out and it will come down to the Eldar versus the Imperial Guard. Unless the orcs get right back right now and, and defend. But it looks like they're going to be focused on all this. Taking out that monolith might cause the rest of the buildings to die, but not with all these builders here. So it seems like the orcs are going to be stalled for a while. Meanwhile, this greater Narlok is actually going to town. And with the, the fire support of the Tau, this is how you are meant to play them. With a strong fire support in the back, um, gunning down while you send in your Kroot and, and Narlok and Krutox kind of units in. Got some stealth squads in there. Got the Tau commander in the mix, fighting properly. I'm liking this a lot. This is actually showing a very strong showing from the the Tau. It seems like the Imperial Guard, uh, for all its strength and might, has been crippled. Uh, meanwhile, what's going on with the Orcs? They're holding on. They've got a big mech out. Um, he's not going to last too long, but every moment that they stall means more time. These buildings are shooting. Uh, I just don't see them surviving this. Which is sad, because they've just killed off the Necron. So if they could maybe run home real quick, they could maybe save it. They just need to save the settlement. And they have the units to do it, they just need to get there before it goes down, but they're so slow. I don't know if they're going to make it over here. It looks like, no, the Great Analog's still going. I wonder if we'll get to see a Bane Blade. Have we seen a Mars Pattern Control yet? Not seeing one just yet. This uh, zoom is wonderful, by the way. <laughs> Definitely a good addition. 
because you can just see so much more going on. Look at all that. You've got two sky rays, got the two um, battle <laughs> broadsides, battle suits, laying down a field of fire. This choke point was devastating for the Imperial Guard. They tried to filter all their infantry through, and while they had a good spread in this heavy cover for their sentinels, that was doing a lot of good work, they didn't have the range. They needed their heavy fire support, either in Lehman Rust tanks or in their basilisks. And it has basically crushed the Imperial Guard. They're going to take a while to recover. And in that time, the Tau could actually claim this corner and get back into the game. I know. I was wrong again. The Tau could come back and win. I don't believe they will, but they could. Uh, and it's looking like the Orcs are doomed at this point. Unless they had some Gretchens somewhere that can rebuild. I don't see them coming back from that either. They've only got just a few units. The Tau's getting hit on multiple fronts right now, which is really unfortunate because they need everything they have. But they have driven off the Imperial Guard. There's only just one squad left. Um, killing that off and, and claiming this area fully, that's it. They're back in the game, you know? They, they can take this whole corner, get themselves re-established, um, go down this way as well, you know, claim all that stuff. Yeah, they've got the army to do it. Um, right now, having an army is just as effective as having an, an economy, because having an economy is great and all, but if you don't have an army to back it, you're just going to get destroyed, and, and the Imperial Guard do not have an army. They're sending troops, like, one squad at a time into the meat grinder right now, and while that's very, very kind of the thing the Imperial Guard might want to do, um, normally they do it with a bit more tactics, like, you know stall the enemy with the meat grinder while you shell them with artillery. Something like that. Uh, just sending them into the meat grinder to die. Uh, don't know if that's quite... quite the intended strategy. That just seems like a, a reckless waste of life and suicide. There's a difference, right, between... Um, between... overwhelming with numbers and, and wasting resources. And the Imperial Guard is a valuable resource. Like I said, it's the backbone of the Imperial Guard, it's the Guardsmen. So just sending them to die is, is definitely weakening the Imperial Guard. Doesn't matter if you think your numbers are limitless, you, you are still confined by every man on the battlefield. Every man on the battlefield needs to contribute at least something. Still not seeing a Mars Patton Command? They do own this relic, so they could go for the Lehman Rust Battle Tanks. Um, a little confused why they haven't yet, but it's fine, I'm sure they'll get there. We've already seen a great Analox, that's the first Relic unit. Um, and my gosh, they're tanky. Let's have a look. 8,000 health and they just melee fight. 600 to 800 melee damage is astounding. It looks like the Eldar are going to hopefully swoop in for the Killing Blow, purge the Orcs from this land, burn the ground so their Fungus can't reform into more Orcs. How long do you think it took someone to realize how the orcs reproduced? Do you think someone just had some orc DNA in a lab and started regrowing and they're like, oh god, this is going to turn into orcs? And then once they figured that out, they were like, right, kill it, <laughs> burn it to the ground, burn it all. That'd actually be a pretty interesting story. I don't know how long it takes for orcs to develop and form their, their fungus societies with the grot pits and all that, but it'd actually be an interesting, almost a alien style horror story where someone has some orc fungus in a lab or maybe the lab gets abandoned and a team has to go and investigate and it's been overrun by orcs i'm sure something like that's probably been done in warhammer but it's probably been done with the tyranid whereas i reckon the orcs make an equally good villain to the tyranids you know they're, they're sort of tyranids light in that regard where the tyranids are your swarm and devour everything faction the orcs are very swarmy as well they just don't eat quite as much. They make for a more compelling villain either way. And, uh, you know, the intelligence displayed by the Tyranid is, is obviously not anything to be scoffed at, but I think it'd be interesting to just have this raging, strong, hulking monstrosity tear down a, a whole way of a lab, chasing down some poor, poor guardsman whose lasgun's only gonna barely scorch through the flesh. So as I said, the Tau are now trying to consolidate power. They just need to drive this back, claim that area. Um, the Imperial Guard are making their stand here. No Tau will cross this road. Uh, but unfortunately, the Tau have been drawn into this fight over here. And in fact, the Tau are spreading out this way. If they could claim... So I have no idea who controls what. Okay, that's player six. 
if the Tau could push out this way and claim a bunch, they have killed off the Eldar um, forces quite effectively. Not entirely, but I, I think they did a big hit to the Eldar as well. The Tau are looking very strong. And it's going to take a lot for the other teams to keep up. I think they really will need their own relic units or heavy, heavy vehicles like the uh, Fire Prisms or Lehman Rust Battle Tanks. I don't know why I could keep, keep calling them Battle Tanks. But the Lehman Rust Tanks, I think, are going to be heavily needed to support this war effort if they hope to beat the Tau. And I'm wondering when the Mars Patent Command will show itself because surely they will have one soon. They have the Relic for forever. Let's have a look what the teams are up to again. The Imperial Guard. Acquiring targets. Just sort of getting a few things here and there. That's not going to do anything. Do not move your forces in there, please, please. I only got the command squad. No assassin. Just a few bolter turrets up there. I do like this coverage up the back. That's kind of awesome. Uh, Perish Dark Eldar. Tau in, in full force. Full resources. They're a bit behind in food. I think they keep losing their um, tech structures that provide them that food. Unfortunately. Like a barracks or a... I forget what the, the research center is called. Dead. Orcs. Yeah, they've got nothing. They've got a lot of resources, so they can produce an army non-stop, but that's just going to stall the game out. They, they really just need to control, kill, whatever the command is in this game. And Eldar? Uh, I... okay. What is... going on here? Have they not teched up? They don't have vehicles. One plasma generator. They've got the... What? <laughs> okay, well, the Eldar uh, have chosen not to participate in a more interesting game this time around. Um, and have chosen to remain on one plasma um, generator and not contribute to the battle at a whole. Here we go, another Imperial Guard push. We've got Sentinels backing Imperial Guardsmen. We don't have a lot defending this. The town needs to rush over and back this up. They don't want to lose their base when they've been doing so strong. Uh, their forces are all spread out though. That is such a mighty army of these battle suits and Narlocks and all that. What they really need is a couple of crew, but they're not actually against melee oriented factions, so this might be the way to go right now. Short of some Howling Banshees, I don't see anything stopping what the tower currently has. Maybe the command squad, but even then, look at how quick this is dying. Getting absolutely shredded there. There's the rest of the command squad apparently. That's a bit weird. Uh, and this is just getting slowly picked off by, sadly, these uh, sentinels. That's a little bit miserable. Maybe it was a mistake choosing this map. The AI doesn't know where to go now that they've got all the freedom of choice. All these Imperial Guardsmen just chilling out. I mean, I can't blame them. They're just stocking up their troops. Um, seems like a wise move to get ready, but... Uh, yeah, I was really hoping to see more Relic units really get to that top tier and... and hammer on each other. I will say the improved AI has definitely, I think it definitely made a difference. Not a single team sort of killed over and died short of the Sisters of Battle, but I don't think that's a fault of theirs. It looks like the Imperial Guard are going to be moving in while the Tau are just off in their own world. Looks like they're starting to move back now, um, but they really need to make sure their units move back in the right order. They can come up here, come up on this hill and start laying it on a field of fire. That should hopefully drive off the Imperial Guard. Unfortunately, it looks like we've got some of the more stally factions fighting each other. There's a... Oh, they're getting Hellhounds. Never mind. I thought for a moment that was a Lehman Ross upgrade. Please continue. Make some Hellhounds. That would be cool. Make some Chimeras. Send them in. Light some shit on fire. See the Imperial Guard. Plain Marine symbol there. It's taking them so long to kill off the Orcs just because the Orcs have resources. The Orcs are definitely not going to win this one. Don't even dream. Do they even have... They haven't even fully upgraded their... Aspect portal, which is just strange. Uh, yeah, it looks like the Eldar kind of got stalled somehow. So it looks like it's going to come down to Imperial Guard versus Tau. And the Tau have admittedly gone up their full tech tree. They, they're struggling a little bit just because they've been on the back foot for the whole game. But at this point, I'd actually consider them... 
pretty likely to win so long as they don't lose here and now and they do have you know everything going for them as long as these vehicles are starting to get chipped off that's a bit scary but this greater Narlok's about to come in he's getting a bit stuck on allied units the broadside settling in that's another gunship about to die there are just so many sentinels coming in god that's seven sentinels yeah, no, I think this might be the death of the, the uh, Tau. That's kind of sad, because I'd really had them pinned as, as sort of a... Well, no, I didn't have them pinned. I, I thought they were going to lose quite badly. They just walked their own hammerhead gunship into that. That wasn't a good move. Okay, that's going to be their death blow. The Great Analog's down. I, I, my faction at heart, this is the faction I love to play the most, so... I had some hopes that they'd fare a little better, but it uh, looks like right now... Unless these broadside battle suits, unless this stupidity happens where the Imperial Guard retreats, um, really thought that the tower sort of making a comeback there, but they, they ran over here to the other side of the map and didn't get a lot done. The Eldar are doing so badly that they do not deserve a win. Um, the Orcs really got blindsided by them. It's a little unfortunate that they were just so distracted fighting the Necrons that they got taken out of this game because I don't think the orcs were doing bad either they'd moved up to vehicle tech and from there it's just a matter of getting your warg up before they start doing really crazy things so it's a bit of a shame that the orcs will get eliminated as well but it looks like a fairly decisive at this point imperial guard victory unless these broadside broadside battle suits really kill off a bunch of units I would have picked the Eldar as faring well against the imperial guard but not against this sheer number um, that the Imperial Guard has been fielding. As much as I joked about how they were wasting them. Oh, there's a Chimera. Hellhound, sorry. Yeah, Hellhounds. I don't know why I was calling it the Chimera. The Chimera is the transport with the gun. But good. Good, good, good. We want to see more of that. Build some tanks. Build Lehman Rust tanks. I like all the flame units in this game. Obviously, because I like fielding large infantry mixed you know core armies of infantry and vehicles um i do like to have flamethrower vehicles in there to contribute to that fight and unfortunately these battle suits have just walked to their demise that's going to be a quick cleanup for the imperial guard and that might even aggro their entire team in to destroy off the rest of the tower we'll see they're pretty close to it it could happen Have we got anyone else faring any better? Again, I'm surprised the Eldar are stalled in the way that they are. I would have thought they'd be doing much better just because they've been left untouched the entire game. But this builder is doing nothing. Can I just assume control? And Well, at least they finally upgraded this and they're getting their fast here. Okay. I don't know. Maybe they got stalled in their tech somehow in some weird way that I don't understand. But... Uh, Maybe the fact they've finished upgrading this means they'll finally, finally get to it. Yeah, this looks like the death knell of, again, the, the tower. They built the second HQ, but that's not going to help. Um, the Imperial Guard are just going to clear this out. That's all their gas. I'm sure they've got plenty stocked up, but they're losing a lot of... <laughs> Is that the uh, commissars executing people? Those loud bangs? Where's an Imperial Guard squad with poor morale? Who are you shooting? Yeah, <laughs> he's executing whenever his morale drops, even slightly. Th that was another one. My god, the commissars are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Imperial Guard losses. <laughs> Casualty are going to have more kills than... The Imperial Guard are going to have more kills than the enemies have losses. Which is, you know, just... That's... Uh, that's how they should play. That is 100% to the Imperial Guard. Got two Hellhounds on the field. It seems like the Imperial Guard are still sort of progressing towards their techs. So there still is a hope that they get some Lehman Ross tanks. Um, and get some, get to that Mars pattern control, and then we finally see a Bane Blade. I would be so excited for that, seeing a Bane Blade patrol around the map, just unleashing hell. 
One of the coolest things you can see in this game is that main cannon go off and just explode everything. The Earthshaker artillery shots are nothing compared to that. And again, the tower being left alone as the Imperial Guard flood out across the map, single file almost, trying to get through this narrow choke point. Yeah, never picking a map with narrow choke points again. That's clearly been the downfall here. But they're flooding across the map to go pick a fight with the Eldar. Oh no, Miss Farseer, you do not want to run in there. That is going to be a quick demise. Running some Howling Banshees into a Hellhound, that's not going to work either. Yeah, well, this particular engage isn't too bad, but that's just because this half of the army is lagging behind. But once they catch up, this is going to get cleaned up. The Eldar are going to be without a force, without a military at that point. And back at home, they don't have anything. They're not building vehicles. They're not upgrading, you know? They're not going anywhere. They're static. They're even being driven back by the orcs a bit, which is just a damn shame. I'm sure this is all part of their plan. That's how the Eldar work. Everything's, you know, part of their plan. But uh, it's not a very good plan. They're losing a lot of Eldar for it. Oh, I love the priests with those big old chainsaws. Giving temporary, I think, temporary invulnerability. It's fun to make a command squad of nothing but them and just chain the invulnerabilities one after the other so that they never die. It's a bit goofy. I don't know if it always works. Um, but yeah, you can <laughs> basically do that and have a ridiculous command squad. Unfortunately, it's only a command squad and a command squad won't win you the game. But it, it can be funny in casual play. Of course, you have to reach that tech first, which is pretty far up the tech tree. Imperial Guard coming in for a second go, but let's face it, sorry, the Eldar coming in for a second go, but let's face it, the Imperial Guard numbers are not afraid of this army. Look at that, getting absolutely shredded by those plasma rifles. Plasma guns, sorry. I think a plasma rifle might be a bit bigger in this universe, I can't remember. Unfortunately, yeah, we don't seem to be able to, it just seems like the Imperial Guard are, are now going to push for the win. Um... And that's a shame that the Eldar didn't do more. They really had the potential for it. The Imperial Guard left them alone this entire time. They could have had the world. But it looks like they'll be next to be eliminated before the Orc and before the Tau. Which is amazing because the, the Tau, the Imperial Guard were on their doorstep for half the game. And the Orcs have, don't have a settlement. They don't have a HQ to build up from. They're stuck. They're, they're never going to progress. Quite frankly, the only person responsible for this is the Eldar themselves. They need to get in their webway and get the heck out of here, because they are doomed. That Psyker is just having a time right now. He's just standing there screaming, getting shot. Forces moving in. Again, thanks to Mixter for suggesting this camera mod. It is, even if I didn't use the AI mod, this camera mod has been absolutely wonderful. Um, definitely a, a great addition, just giving that bigger field of view. It's really what this game needed, was that bigger zoom out. Really, all RTS games should have a massive way to zoom out, just so you can witness big battles. Ideally, I wish every game, every RTS had a zoom out like Supreme Commander, where you could zoom out and, and literally watch the entire map, but uh, even just a big zoom out like StarCraft 2 has is good. And like this, obviously. Sometimes you can't see everything going on screen. And while I understand it's a skill to be able to manage things that are happening off screen as well as on screen, it just makes for a better spectacle being able to watch all of this play out. You don't really need that bottom bar anymore. Don't think we're going to get anything out of it. The Imperial Guard isn't even sending their full force right now. They've got, what, four squads, maybe five, just chilling back there. And really, they don't need it. The Tau are constantly, uh, the Eldar are constantly producing units. Sorry, I get the team mixed up all the time. The Eldar are constantly producing units, and it's just a meat grinder. Um, they're burning through all their resources, like you wouldn't believe. It's sad that it took them this long to be a bit more proactive, uh, because it's too late. We have, what, four Hellhounds and four Sentinels? They're going to shred through everything so quick. I think they're both good. No, I thought Hellhounds were good against uh, buildings, but no, we've just got, uh... Oh yeah, XLs are taking down buildings. Uh, Sentinel's not good against buildings? I would have thought they were alright, because they're good against vehicles and aircrafts, but if they're only good against vehicles and aircraft, that's fine too. 
But yeah, this looks like the the final end. Whoa! That is so scary. Called in an airstrike. Mostly hit their own forces, sadly. Where's that command squad? There he is. Shooting his own team. And this will be the defeat of the Eldar, despite that working unit and the Bone Singer just chilling over there. And that brings us down to just three teams. The overwhelming superiority of the Imperial Guard is undeniable at this point. However, we are seeing that the Tau are once again claiming this area, pushing in quite aggressively. I don't know why everyone has this fascination with building multiple command centers, HQs. I can understand the Imperial Guard want it for, for additional scans, but why would the Tau want it? All they can do is stealth suits, Vespids, and workers. Well, you know, what's going to come from that? You, you're not going to... I mean, Vespids build pretty quick, but... Uh, why the... Why the stealth suits? Are you really going to field that many stealth suits? You should be spending that on fire warriors and, and crude warriors um, to sort of bear the front line. Are the Eldar not defeated because they have the webway? I think so. That's really pathetic. <sighs> and now the orcs are getting torn to shreds by the Imperial Guard. It's really an ugly back and forth where I think the Imperial Guard's biggest weakness is that they have to be everywhere at the same time. Because otherwise they would just be winning. The Devilfish troop carrier, the infamous troop carrier. All the troubles it caused in competitive tabletop play. Going down. This should be just fine. Um, I don't know what's going to happen once that HQ is built. I hope once the HQ is built they get more... Can they not reach the Fire Warriors? Well, that's sad. They need a scan there to um, detect those. And Assassin, that's not going to help much. Oh, he'll pick off. Oh, okay, there we go. There goes the scan. The Assassin will help if he doesn't get caught into this uh, fight. Hopefully they build some Guardsmen straight from here or get their reinforcements over because look at this army. Yeah, there's the first unit. Here comes a Hellhound. That'll make a big difference. No, you're not... Okay, there we go. They're in there. They're getting in the fight. This lone bone singer. He's been there all game. I, what if he... I think he might have been whatever broke the Eldar. I don't think that the Eldar really um, failed. I think there might have just been like a hiccup in their AI somehow that stopped them from progressing. I don't think it was actually a failure of the mod by any degree. Um... I'm sure it's just like a 1 in 10 thing, you know, that sometimes an AI breaks still and uses the old AI or, or doesn't follow through a build path. It's just stuff happens with AIs, you can't always control it. This might finally be the death of the Tau. I don't want to, to say it for certain. I'd be sad to see them die before the Eldar. The Orcs are just constantly claiming things. I wonder if the... It'd be funny to see the Orcs win off the back of a single um, boy's hut. With that lovely ultramarine symbol on the front. But without being able to rebuild, they'll, they'll never get anywhere. Alright, I'm only going to give it a little bit longer. We clearly see that the Imperial Guard has won at this point. And right now, they're just running back and forth between the different groups fighting. Um, they should really, unless they actually kill the Tau off, you know, pretty soon... I'm not going to run over here, you know, wait for them to run over here and fight the orcs and then run all the way across the map to fight the tower again. It's just going to take another half hour for them to do. And they clearly have the dominant position. No one's going to dethrone them at this point. Look at this. They've got multiple um, listening posts coming up right within tower territory. Tower must have only have like three or four listening posts for resource right now. Because they don't have these ones anymore. The Orcs are taking them. So in the future, I think what I'm going to do is uh, host a little miniature tournament between all the different factions of the... Uh, of Warhammer. I'll do a winners and losers bracket. Um, I'll seed them, I'll use just challenge or whatever the website is that allows you to seed tournaments. So that'll, that'll be how I do that. 
um, have a fun little skirmishy fight between each of them, a 1v1, preferably on a, an interesting map. And we'll see how they go. Uh, we'll try and do a four-player map so they get a chance to actually expand properly and show some of their stuff. We'll just do a series of 1v1s um, until we get down to which faction out of Warhammer 40k, Dawn of War, Soulstorm, is the best. I do think as the games go, Dawn of War, Soulstorm, it was reasonably well balanced. I won't say it was like perfectly balanced. I won't say it was, you know, the best out of the series. Um, it clearly had its, its flaws, but uh, I think it's well enough balanced, especially in an AI situation, that we can throw the AIs into a series of 1v1s and, and make for an interesting experience. I'm only going to go to uh, an hour at this point, um, you know, unless we see... Oh, just as I'm saying it, the Mars Patton Command has finally come down. They might have been waiting to build a second field command before they did that. There are some quirks with every AI. That's why the, the Tau keep trying to build this second cadre headquarters. They might be building a certain thing within their tech. I think that's the Eldar finally eliminated. Wow, this is such a big military. I think the only problem is they will never be able to build a Baneblade because it might require vehicle squad cap. And I'm going to be pretty sure that they're maxed out. Yeah, 20 out of 60. That's uh, 20 out of 16. Oh, there we go. Mars Patton Command. Please, please, please get me a Bane Blade. That's all I want for Christmas, is a Bane Blade. The Tau, they still have a reasonable bit of control, but they just don't have the, the cap right now, and it's because they haven't got um, all their tech structures they need, like the Montcar command post. Uh, I don't know if this cadre headquarters will give them more cap, but maybe. Uh, we've got the Orcs coming through. They're not doing anything. Stealth suits, chilling around, chilling out. I like the stealth suits, uh, the inverse colors. So they're bright red instead of bright blue. That's funny. I should have looked at that sooner. Got some storm boys poking in, losing their their relic. Confused, what's going on? I oh, don't lose them. That's just a waste. The only thing the orcs have to detect them is a uh, big mech or a knob. What's detecting them? That's weird. I don't see what they've got that can detect oh well oh the imperial guard scanned helping out their orc allies against the tau we see yeah more stealth suits building uh the lone are here. until we see a bane blade nothing's really going to happen just doing one little check around looking for the imperial guards next move Hopefully they finally take out the orcs and then clear out the last of them. Yeah, it looks like not a lot is happening for any of the teams now. We'll go from the Necrons perspective from now on. I like their uh, sidebar. It looks kind of cool down there. That very narrow skull. So yeah, I think I'll, I'll go through a little tournament of the different teams in uh, Dawn of War. Maybe I'll do the same with different RTS games. I do love RTS, the genre, so much that I'm happy to watch all kinds of games doing all kinds of things. You know, I could do the same with uh, with Red Alert 3, with Warcraft, with Battle Realms, with uh, anything, basically. I think the only games I don't like are the ones where there is such a heavy emphasis on numbers, large numbers. Like, these, these to me don't feel like large numbers, and I think it's because of the way they break them down into squads. But... Things like Supreme Commander, it, it's not that I dislike what Supreme Commander is. I think Supreme Commander is absolutely fantastic. But just the sheer numbers that you're constantly producing in that game, I think, takes away from the individual coolness of certain units. And it has a coolness factor of its own, um, and same for Age of Empires. But uh, it just ends up not being the kind of game that I'm personally interested in. So I'm definitely more about these, these games with fantastical and crazy um, units. Obviously, my favorite thing about Subcom in, in that case is the experimentals and the high-tier units, like the, the Tier 3 battleships and that. So, But yeah, just about any RTS game, I'll, I'll get behind um, and watch and, and thoroughly enjoy. As long as there is base building, research, resource gathering, and units, that's all that, that I, I'm keen to, to, to watch and play out. And quirky AI... <laughs> Maybe not this quirky, where they have this giant army and they're not just going for the kill. 
Oh, but that might start them off. If that... <laughs> yeah, just lure them. Lure them in, Tower Commander. Lure them to your base. Yeah, okay, this is definitely going to be the end. I can't see a single reason the Imperial Guard would retreat at this point. This army's going to come in, get gunned to pieces, but it's too late. The Tau have woken the sleeping... Nope, they're running away. Damn it. <laughs> you know their base is there, just kill them. Some wide view of just everything getting gunned to pieces. Yeah, that force did not last. See those Kroot carnivores? I'm a big fan of Kroot. They're just awesome. And they're not building a Bane Blade. They're never going to build a Bane Blade. That's just a dream. What's he got building there? Plasma Generator? Yeah. Well, I think I'll call it at 60 minutes then. We'll give one scan through uh, uh, real quick to just make sure... They're not actually building a Bane Blade. They haven't snuck one out, and I've just missed it. There's the Orcs, trapped in their own little pit of 35 population. Let's have a look at the Imperial Guard. Not Vindicare Assassin and Squad Camp, <laughs> but we do not have a Bane Blade on the way. And I suspect we never will, just because that vehicle cap is maxed out. Maybe if someone had fared a little stronger at this point in the game, uh, we would have seen more crazy things. But uh, I think in the future I might have to actually turn on and take and hold victory just to stop stalemates like this. And by stalemates I mean AI quirkiness, because they should be just going for the kill right now. They should have just be coming over here and destroying all this. Um, basically not doing anything, and I'm not sure entirely why. So yeah, I think I'm just going to call it now, in fact... Um, the AI seems to have settled in and gotten comfortable, and we can call without a doubt that our, our winner was the Imperial Guard. So let's have a look at some of the stats in that game, and I'm expecting to see some absolutely disgusting numbers because it went so long. So for the Imperial Guard, obvious winner for score. Tau, close second. Eldar, because they lasted so long. Orcs, and then the teams that got creamed. Space Marines had 37 points. So, units killed, 583, they raised so many buildings, that is without a doubt the reason the Imperial Guard were dominant. Resources, obviously, um, and reinforcements used, research count, technology. It's sad that we did not get to see a Bane Blade, but that is how the cookie crumbles. And so hopefully, yeah, in the future I'll, I'll do this, and I'll do it now that I've seen the AI in action. I'm, I feel more confident to put them in a tournament against each other where it'll actually make for an interesting showing. So look forward to that in the future. Um, please, please come again to watch more content like this. I enjoy making it, and so long as there are people watching, I'll just keep doing it. It's, it's a lot of fun watching the bots smash each other around. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, join me again for the next Bot Bash or the next something else. See you for now.